Okay, this is going to be a little um, demo tutorial on using Tracker. Uh, first of all, to download Tracker, go to your Google search bar and search for Tracker and Physics. You, those two words together. If you search on just Tracker, there's too many other things that could mean. So if you search for both of those, you'll see it's part of the Open Source Physics project, and uh, you'll get a program when you open it. It looks like this. So download it, install it, and open it for the first time, and here you're looking at the general workspace. Now, I've made some videos of um, uh, involving some motion. Let me just bring one up here. And I can just drag and drop it into the view. And I have here, I'm holding in the view, I'm holding a meter stick, and then I hold a tennis ball. I'm going to just toss the tennis ball around. Okay. Notice up here the magnification, it's fitting it to the screen. It's 54%. If I go up to 100%, I can use these scroll bars to position uh, the work. Okay. You need a, you need something in the visual field uh, about the same distance from the camera as the experiment um, so that you can get a scale. Uh, you could just measure pixels on here, but to convert it to real world measurements like meters or centimeters or feet or whatever you wanted, you need a, a, some way to calibrate. So let's just go through and see how we could um, add tracking points to this and analyze it for position and velocity and acceleration and so forth. Okay. So uh, up here, this little icon looks like a, a clip of a film right here above my head. And that tells you the characteristics of the video clip. So we're using a video clip with a rate of 30 frames per second. And we're doing step size of one. All right. So uh, the, the frames or the, the points we choose will be uh, a 30th of a second apart. Just for simplicity, I'm going to change that to two. Um, so I'm going to uh, have a little bit coarser result than you would if you did it carefully on your own. Okay. Okay. So it's going to go every other frame. Uh, and so it'll just be a little quicker just for the demo purposes here. Okay, that's this one. Next thing you need to do is to establish a calibration. So if I click that and say new, and I'm going to use calibration stick. There's other ways you can do this. And uh, notice what it does is it drops this little blue thing in the middle of your picture. It is, I think, sort of in the middle if you center everything. But what I want to do is grab the ends. I'm going to grab that end and put it there and grab this end and put it down here. And now I'm going to zoom in like 400 power, or 400% anyway, and position these a little bit more accurately. And that's the thing about this is you can uh, use essentially a magnifying glass for positioning things carefully. It's important that you get the calibration um, uh, accurately represented because uh, that would be a systematic error. All of your measurements would be off if you... Um, had the calibration off. Okay. All right. Uh, this is an auto tracker. I'm going to leave that for you to experiment with on your own. Since we're going to be talking about a tennis ball, the auto tracker should be able to work and follow the tennis ball. The contrast isn't really high between yellow and white, but uh, if I had like a black ball on a white background or something, uh, these little lines might be distractors too. So it doesn't work perfectly, but um, Hey, it works reasonably well, and then you can always go back and tweak it. So I'm not going. I'm going to put these on by hand. So what we're going to do is create a point mass. In other words, we are going to track uh, the images from the screen by positioning something that coincides with the position of the ball. And when I do that, uh, we'll be able to see the data here. Uh, this is a data table numerically and a graph, and you can change the views here if you want. And we can do other things with it that I'll show you later on. So um, I'm just going to pick a point that I can identify clearly, which is the, the very bottom center of the tennis ball. And so if I uh, click down here, let's see, I have to hit that. So it's, I've selected point mass. Now if I hit shift, notice what happens to the cursor. 
I'm going to position it there and then hit shift and click and that put a mark on there. But notice the mark is still there and that's going to get in the way. So I'm going to come up here to set trail length and say no trails. So now if I go back one, there's the mark. But for the current one, there's no mark. Okay, so I'm going to do it again. And again. And again. Notice my hand is still in contact. So we should be able to see in the data the point at which uh, the ball leaves contact with my hand. See, I could use the center of the ball, but positioning it uh, accurately could be a little bit of an issue. Um, the auto tracker is going to look around for boundaries and that uh, probably will track on the center of the ball pretty accurately. Let's slide this over and keep going. Let's see. And I don't know if it's actually touched anything yet or not. Let's take that as the last data point. Okay. All right. Let's come back to, let's say, 50% or to fit. Okay. Now, let's put the trails on there. Uh, that's this thing. I'm going to show all the steps. And notice that they're all numbered. If that's distracting, you can turn off the numbers there. And in fact, if you don't like the little diamonds, you can come down and say footprint for position and choose some other kind of a marker, like say a spot. So here's just little dots, for instance. Okay, so it's just a matter of taste. Or if you have several different tracks, you might want to use several different markers. You can also change the color of those dots and so forth. Um, right here, all these different characteristics. There's color and so forth. All right. Now. Uh, notice what we're plotting over here, this is a, a little summary graph, is x versus t. And notice that uh, it was not consistent at the beginning, but after a certain point, after about, what, the fourth dot here, it looks like it's linear. Okay, So that means it's moving in the horizontal direction with equal amounts of distance for equal times. Other, in other words, we're going at a constant velocity. Okay. If I graph y versus t, notice that I now have something that looks like a parabola, except for this first part where I had my hand in contact. Okay. Um, there's another thing we could do. Let's look at velocity in the y direction. So here's where I was uh, in contact, and like from this point on, it looks like I have a velocity. Uh, which is a linear uh, function here. Let's go back and look at this in uh, in this uh, graph here. So as I go, uh, as I am stepping through the positions here on the picture, I'm also um, uh, stepping through here, and I'm also stepping through the data down here. Okay, so as it's rising, on this kind of a graph, velocity versus graph, as it's rising, we're starting with a high upward velocity, which then is being reduced by gravity because gravity is pulling down. So the vertical velocity is decreasing as it rises until it actually stops. And notice where this line crosses the zero line here. That's where the vertical velocity is momentarily zero but it just crosses that line and keeps on going. And so the velocity now turns negative and it's going to get more and more negative as time goes on. And if I look at the velocity versus time, it looks like a straight line through it all. Okay, the slope of this kind of a velocity versus time graph should give us the acceleration. By the way, we could look at acceleration here. Let's look at acceleration in the y direction. And apart from the first few, we're down here at around, hmm, that says, that says minus 1. Oh, look at what happened here. Look at this. It says 100. Okay, let's go back. Um, 
I'm going to look at y versus t. Uh, let's go back here to uh, the, the meter stick. I set it and left it at 100. So this is like calibrating everything in centimeters. And I'm going to just put it as 1.0 instead. And so now it's calibrated in, in meters. Okay. So let's go back to velocity. And there's our graph. And then acceleration in the y direction. And now it's around minus 10. Okay, acceleration of gravity is about minus 10. So depending on the accuracy of our measurement, it's minus 9.8 actually. Looks like we're a little bit overestimated here on the downward acceleration. Let's do this. Uh, let's go back to velocity versus time on the y direction and right click up here and go to analyze. And there. Okay, now this is just a, a duplicate of this graph, except we can now work with it more accurately. So for instance, what if I want to fit a curve to this, I fit an interpretive line here? Uh, so notice it says line. I could fit a parabola or cubic or other functions here, but let's take a linear fit. And I'm going to take just these few data points, like right here, and notice that down here it says... Uh, the equation of the fit is v sub y equals a t plus b. If you remember y equals mx plus b uh, for a straight line from algebra 1, notice the y-axis here is actually v sub y, and the x-axis is actually t. The, so the vertical axis is uh, this is equal to a constant times this plus another constant. And so the a should be our slope. And look over here, here's the a and here's the b for the best fit line through this few points here. If I uh, take the, through more points, okay, uh, so there we have it. So around minus 10, okay. There's a bit of error uh, in our measurement. We just care, um, we just, we didn't do the positioning of those data points very carefully. We could go back and uh, get a more careful analysis if we wanted to, okay. Um, so there we go. We can actually do this quantitative measurement of velocity, position, and so forth. One of the other things is just recognizing um, each of these graphs and what they mean. Watch this. Watch the ball on the video and watch uh, the position here. Notice we're looking at x versus t. And so as I step across here, So once I let go, notice that we're making um, equal vertical steps here for equal horizontal steps on the graph. The vertical steps on the graph mean horizontal position on the picture. So we're moving horizontally in equal distance in equal times is what this is getting at. So this shows that the horizontal motion of the ball is at uniform velocity. Okay. If you want to say why... Let's take this one. Um, again, we can, this is almost just like a picture of the vertical motion. And so you can see that it rises and falls. Uh, except for in this case, this is y versus x as what we're seeing in the picture. In our graph, we're looking at y versus t. I could change this to be x, and now this would be a literal uh, copy of our picture here assuming the scales were uh, the same, okay? Uh, and that may not be the case. These are arbitrarily positioned relative to each other, okay? So most of these, most of the time, you can pretty much plot anything versus anything you want. And so if I look at time, which is our usual thing that we're interested in, um, you got it, all right? Um, let's take this graph, let's go to Analyze. And notice that the, we now have three columns here. We have t, and then we have y, and v sub y. If we're interested in plotting y versus time, we don't really want these. So we can eliminate this column. And then what we can, whatever is in the first two columns is what we're going to be interested in primarily. Notice it's on fit, but this time I want to fit a parabola. 
okay and so if I were to fit a parabola that goes through that few data points there uh, notice that it fits the rest of the data points also pretty well so that's a good way of modeling and so it looks like we finally we're letting go of the ball right about this point here okay uh, also the the equation of the fit is a t squared plus b t plus c so that's our quadratic and here's our a b and our c so we could actually uh, write down the equation of this path which raises yet another point um, notice that in all of these cases we were using this arbitrary uh, coordinate system if I were to um, here let's go back here to the very beginning if I after the fact now let's move it uh, to say down here I think what's going to happen is it adjusts all of these um, to compensate so as I step through it yes that coordinate system now applies and by the way if your camera was tilted you can grab this little point right here and move it up and down and rotate the coordinates as well like for instance if I click here and then move it out here I can control let's make this exactly parallel with the bottom of the garage door and so this is uh, perhaps compensating for any tiny bit of tilt that you can see there okay so there we have it um, quite a imp impressive tool there's a lot of things tracker will do that I haven't even touched on notice this was a tenth of a degree is the adjustment we made and as we go through it um, okay now one last thing uh, once you have a track uh, that you've done a lot of work on uh, it's important to save it if I say file by the way you can do several tabs down here at the bottom this says ball toss that's this particular um, video you might have several videos you can create or you can open them in different tabs but if uh, we want to save this we say save tab as and then we can uh, put this wherever we want and give it a name it'll be .trk for the tracker file and then when you open it up again or if you pass it around to somebody else they can open it and see the actual analysis you did the marks you made and so forth all right um, have fun